Playing jazz. Playing jazz. Smoothie. Making smoothie. Calendar. No meetings today. Remember, dentist at 9.30. Fire off. Fire off. Open door. Door open. And we're going to do one more. Oh, yeah. Open door. Wrong voice command. Open door. Wrong voice command. Open. Open door. Repeat that. Open door. I didn't understand that. Hey, open door. Play on the floor. Sing on the floor. Sing on the floor. Open the door. Wrong open the door. Command. Error. Hey, video. Good rock. Ah. Open door. Did you guys have a good laugh? All those video clips are examples of the use of biometric technology. So what is biometric technology? It is an upcoming technology that captures the measurements of a person's unique physical features and uses it for authentication. Biometric authentication refers to security processes that verify a user's identity through unique biological traits such as retinas, irises, voice, facial structure, and fingerprints. Biometric authentication systems store this biometric data to verify a user's identity when they access their account. And the use of biometric technology is now becoming widely used by many consumers, businesses, and by the government. There are two main types of biometrics, physiological and behavioral. Physiological, also known as physical biometrics, analyze data such as facial features, eye structures, finger parameters, palm topography, hand structure, vein pattern, thermal signature, and many more. While behavioral biometrics are based on a person's behavioral characteristics, it evaluates the unique behavior and subconscious movements of a person in the process of reproducing any actions. For example, the way how you type, the way how you write your signature, how you walk, how your lips move when you talk, and the way how you speak. Biometric technology offer us many benefits in our personal life and professional life. Some of the benefit it gives is convenience. Biometrics makes our life easier. It helps us get things done faster. We can unlock our phone by using our facial structures. We can log in to our bank account and emails using our fingerprint. And we can control our electronic devices such as phone, TV, and computers with our voice. Another benefit biometric technology provides is security. Today's biometric authentication is generally more secure than traditional password. Because every individual has their own unique characteristics, Data cannot be guessed or stolen in the same fashion as a traditional password. 
In businesses, biometric technology help companies to be more reliable, increase their productivity, and be more cost effective. Furthermore, it also helps them increase their efficiency, time management, and reduce absenteeism. However, biometric technology, like any other technology, still has numerous flaws and weak spots. Such imperfection cause various ethical issues. First, violation of privacy. There are several ethical issues present out there, but the violation of privacy is one of the primary concern. A clear violation of privacy occurs when biometric information is captured without the affected individual's consent. For example, Tampa Police Department used facial recognition technology during the 2001 Super Bowl game. They compiled images of over 100,000 attendees via the CCTV images and compared them back to the police database. Here's another one. In 2017, Six Flags was sued because they failed to provide a written disclosure that they were scanning and collecting fingerprints from park visitors and distributing gathered biometric information to other sources. But the court just dismissed the case because nobody really experienced any harmful effect from that incident for now. Sounds pretty messed up, huh? Moreover, violation of privacy could also happen in the workplace when employers track their employees' biometric data to see if they are being productive or not. For instance, if the pupil size or vital sign is being tracked at work, the result might indicate that the employee is more productive or less productive. However, what if the employee is wearing glasses, which made it harder for the sensor to see the eyes, or the employee has a medical condition that lowers or increases their blood pressure? Lower blood pressure means that they are not working, in contrary to high blood pressure, which means they are working really, really hard. Are they going to be fired or get a negative performance review just because their biometrics isn't what expected to be? I think that's a big issue. Second, accessibility. How will the population with disabilities be enrolled or authenticate in biometric database? People with just one hand, no iris or retina, no fingers, burnt fingerprints, mute, and people in general who lack physical features in need of using biometric facility may suffer discrimination and unnecessary delays in biometric system. Third, racial bias. A study organized by the U.S. government in 2002 showed that identification rate for males were 6 to 9 percent higher than females, and recognition rate for older people were higher than younger people. Furthermore, the study found that Asians, African Americans, and other races are easier to be recognized than Caucasians. Such technological shortcoming could cause wrongful accusations followed by wrongful arrest for offenses that a person did not do. This happened during the Madrid bombing in 2004. An innocent man was accused of terrorism but later revealed that the FBI had committed errors in the wrongful accusation of a man due to system flaws. Lastly, security risk. A biometric template is nothing more than another binary file in a database. Therefore, it can be stolen by hackers as any other file. Unlike traditional passwords, if biometric databases are not properly protected and information is stolen, the consequences can be permanently devastating. Our biometric data cannot be changed. It is permanent. There is no easy way to program a biometric system to not recognize an authentic user's legit biometrics. If hackers get a hold of your biometric data, 
they'll be able to use it wherever, whenever, and however they want. With that being said, I would recommend mandating a substantial amount of ethical courses on students pursuing engineering, programming, computer science, and any degree that involves technology. Also, I recommend implementing the Biometric Information Privacy Act, BIPA, nationwide to protect our biometric information. If all states have strict BIPA regulation in place, it will lead to fewer privacy and security issues. Moreover, transparency about biometric technology helps the workplace operate and maintain a healthy environment during difficult times. First, make sure you are working with a provider that you trust. Second, be transparent with your employees about why are you using technology and collecting their specific data. If the data is creating a safer work environment, then employees will be understanding and tend to try their best to help. One way to address concerns is to be transparent with employees on why you are implementing technology, what you will do with it, and how the data will be used. Finally, ensure technicians get appropriate education and training. Most biometric technicians are trained on site by the vendor's personnel. Typical activities of these technicians are collecting samples of enrollment using complex sensors, authenticating identity document of individuals before enrolling them, maintaining the biometric facility under proper conditions, following maintenance protocol correctly, and judging the quality of the samples collected. Technicians who are not well trained can hinder the expected security level of a facility and cause a data leak. To conclude, biometric technology proves to be useful in today's society and it will only continue to advance in an imaginable phase. Still, the interconnection of people's social gadgets like computers, laptops, cars, and smartphones render it vulnerable for criminals to hack, access, steal, and damage their information. Biometrics deployment aims to solving security, authentication, and privacy concerns. However, Biometric technology application comes with underlying ethical and legal troubles due to insufficient legal and regulatory guidance. Hence, this situation requires that governments and organizations seeking to establish and implement biometric technology should formulate an agreeable standard that certifies system, facilities, and personnel. Certification of systems and personnel eliminates bias, misuse, and handling of biometric information, therefore eradicating possible ethical and legal issues. Before I end my presentation, I'd like to show you one more video that encompasses the worst ethical issue in the history of mankind. Please enjoy.